Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's Doctor Who action figure review, I'll be looking at one of the upcoming Doctor Who B&M sets, the friends and foe of the 13th Doctor Collector set, containing Yasmin Khan, Ryan Sinclair, and a Jadoon Trooper. Um, so I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Evolution PR and Character Options for sending this over for me to review. So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to look at the packaging, do articulation detail of the figures and then do a comparison to the existing figures if these figures have existing figures already telling you um, what parts they have used and then I will do my concluding thoughts on the set itself. So without further ado, let's look at the packaging for these figures. So taking a look at the packaging, now the packaging has been slightly tweaked as on the front of the packaging we have seen the removal of the whole sidebar there which allows us to see more of the figures more in depth and if we turn it to the side quickly um, we have removed the image of the actual prototype images of the figures themselves. So the packaging is brilliant as we have the continued style guide motif there with the Gallifrey motif, Dr. Who Vitalis there, a nice window box displaying the three figures inside, so Yaz, Ryan, and a Jadoon Trooper. And you can see the Jadoon accessory telling the scale of figures, what the set is, friend and foe of the 13th Doctor collective figure set, five plus character options. Beside we have the TARDIS motif, and on the back we have the prototype images of the figures there, Yaz Khan, Ryan Sinclair, Jadoon Trooper, and what the set includes there in a the nice little bubble. And on the side there, again, we have what the set includes. So here we have Yasmin Khan herself. I believe that this figure is based from her appearance in It Takes You Away. Now in It Takes You Away, Yaz wears a sort of beige jumper. But because this uses a primeval figure, we have the shirt painted white to represent the jumper. But I'll talk about more of that in the comparison to the primeval figure. So without further ado, let's look at the articulation for Yaz. Then we we'll go on to the detail of the figure itself. So taking a look at the articulation for Yaz, the head can move side to side. But the head does get hindered on the jacket lapel, but it can move side to side. The arm can do a full 360 degree turn. 360 bicep swivel, bend at the elbow. The wrist can do a full 360 degree turn turn we have 360 degree waist articulation now the legs are on a t crotch joint so we can kick out and move to the side we have 360 thigh articulation and bend at the knee so moving on to the detail of yaz i'm just going to say wow character options have done a superb job this is a fantastic likeness to mandip gill it just looks incredibly lifelike so the designs team who've designed this figure have done a superb job. This is one of Character Options' best likenesses. Honestly, it is it is just like they've shrunk Mandip Gill down to a five inch scale. It's just a superb job. I can't get over how brilliant the head sculpt is. You know, it definitely does look like Yaz. So the hair is done excellently. Um, as you can see, the hair strands there, all the different sort of texturing there to show all the individual hair strands and obviously the space buns. Really good attention to detail, you know, again, with all the different hair strands sculpted. We have the lovely face sculpt. And we have a nice little detailing of the earrings where as you can see really good attention to detail by character options there again we continue the nice hair detailing down there now the costume itself is replicated brilliantly now the shirt itself um now this should technically be a jumper um but because obviously this uses existing parts we are left with a white shirt so you it's a close approximation you get what it is and honestly i think it works fine i genuinely think it works absolutely fine so the jacket itself is replicated rather wonderfully um, obviously you can see all the nice sort of crease detailing to give it that lifelike effect and all the sort of panelling and stitching detail to show where the jacket all been stitched together. We have a nice detailing of the buttons on the cuff of the jacket itself. We've got the nice creases to give it that lifelike effect and it definitely does look like a brown leather jacket which Yaz wore quite prominently um, in series 11 actually. Take a look at the arms now, we have the zip sort of seam there which is very accurate to actually Yaz's costume. The shirt is done rather well. Um, with the nice creasing detail there and the buttons sculpted on the shirt itself. Moving down to the trousers now we have the nice detailing of the belt and we have even got the nice little attention to detail of the hoops on the belt um, and the buckle painted there and the belt goes all the way around the actual figure which is all very good attention to detail. The trousers are done really well, we've got the nice creases to give out a lifelike effect, we seam of the trousers, the pockets on the back of the jeans, it is just done really well and the boots themselves um, got a nice little attention to detail um, with the nice sort of black sole and then the sort of brown boot there to give it sort of a definition um, there which is done really well. So Yaz detail wise 
is excellent, the, especially the face sculpt. That just looks so much like Mandip Gill. So moving on to the quick comparison. Now, obviously, um, this is a new head sculpt. The body itself is from a Primeval Series 1 Claudia Brown figure. And again, this figure has been used as the base for the Mary Tam Pirate Planet uh, Romana 1 figure. Uh, so I think that the, using the Claudia Brown figure was a smart move because it is a really good base figure for Yaz um, to be used. You know, it does have a, it's a good approximation of Yaz from It Takes You Away. So moving on to Ryan Sinclair. Again, this figure is based from his appearance in It Takes You Away. So without further ado, let's look at the articulation. Then we'll go on to the detail of the figure. So taking a look at the articulation for Ryan, the head can move side to side. The arms can do a full 360 degree turn. We have 360 at the bicep, bend at the elbow. We have 360 degree wrist articulation. We do have waist articulation, but it's hindered by the jacket. The legs do kick out ever so slightly, but again, hindered by the jacket. We do have 360 degree turn at the thigh and then bend at the knee. So moving on to the detail for Ryan. Now again, character options have done a brilliant job capturing the likeness of Tosin Cole. This is a superb head sculpt. Character option just really nailing the recent head sculpts, the likenesses are just absolutely incredible. This definitely does look like uh, Toast and Cold, as you can see. So taking a look at the hair, the hair is done rather well. As you can see, we've got the nice little detailing of the individual strands of hair. You know, we've got Ryan's style of haircut with the slight fade to it, um, which is really good attention to detail um, by character options. It really does make the figure seem very realistic and lifelike. Now the likeness, like I've said, it definitely does look like Toast and Cold. Just look at that definitely does look like Ryan, it is a superb likeness. So moving to a costume like Yaz, it is based from It Takes You Away and obviously this uses another primeval figure which I'll do a comparison to once I've finished the detail. Now in It Takes You Away, Ryan's costume, basically the jacket is um, unbuttoned. Because this uses a primeval figure, the jacket is done up, but you can definitely tell it is another good close approximation of how Ryan appears in It Takes You Away. Now the detail is really well, I feel like this is again a good use of a primeval base figure. We have the blue jumper painted there, we have the black lapels of the jacket painted which is very accurate to how it appears in the actual story. Now the jacket itself is done really well because you've got this sort of two-tone texture because it is the sort of wax jacket in the actual episode. They basically give it a sort of black base coat and then sort of give it a sort of a green wash over it to really highlight some of the detailing to show um, and give it that sort of waxed effect which is done really well. So the detail on the jacket is done really well. You can see the different sort of textures and different colours. You can see the green, um, you know, popping out in certain areas um, to give it that sort of more worn sort of wax jacket look which I think is really effective. We've got the pocket sculpted on the jacket there with the buttons painted gold which is a really nice touch which really makes the figure pop in my opinion. Again, we've got the buttons again sculpted there. Really nice attention to detail and again you can see the nice sort of green wash really highlighting the sort of sculpting detail of the jacket, you know, with a nice seam, the pockets sculpted there. It is just done really well. So I think character options have done a brilliant job with that. We've got the pockets on the back, the seam of the jacket. Again on the back you can see the sort of two-tone jacket effect, which again makes the figure seem incredibly lifelike. Now the trousers themselves are done really well as they are a sort of grey, uh, painted grey, but then they have a black wash, which I think is really effective because it really does show the detailing of the actual figure itself with a nice sort of creasing detail there, which is done really well. The seam on the trousers and the boots are done really well with the nice panelling stitching detail there. So moving on to the comparison, like Yaz, this uses another Series 1 Primeval figure. This uses the Series 1 Nick Cutter figure. So as you can see, this is, again, another effective use of a Primeval figure to create a new figure. I'm all for it because, you know, the more new characters we can have, the better. Um, because I'm all for new figures because I absolutely love getting the Doctor Who figures. So I think the Nick Cutter figure was a really good base figure for Ryan, especially for using the It Takes You Away costume. Um, like I said, obviously, because it uses the Nick Cutter figure, you know, the jacket isn't open like it is in the story, but it is a really good close approximation to how Ryan is in the actual story. So moving on to the final figure in the set, the Jadoon Trooper, the only monster in the Doc 2 b &M sets for 2020. So without further ado, let's look at the articulation and then we'll go on to the detail. Take a look at the Jadoon articulation. We have no head articulation because it is a helmet. So the arms can do a full 360 degree 
turn 360 at the bicep bend at the elbow the wrist can do a full 360 degree turn the waist can move ever so slightly but is hindered by the torso piece the legs can kick out and they can move ever so slightly out but again hindered by the skirt piece we do have by articulation what can do a full 360 degree turn and bend at the knee so here we have the Jadoon Trooper as seen in Fugitive of the Jadoon and I guess the Timeless Children at the end uh, so taking a look at the details so if you've got your Jadoon Trooper um, then you basically know what detail you're going to be expected but the Jadoon itself does have a few slight tweaks which obviously I'll talk about when we go on to the actual comparison of the original Jadoon figure release so I'm really glad that character options included a Jadoon Trooper um, because it's nice to have another Jadoon um, to build the Jadoon Trooper army. So taking a look at the helmet itself, so we have the great attention to detail of the sort of panelling detail on the actual Jadoon there. You can see all the different sort of lines and sculpting and obviously the breathing holes for the Jadoon. Um, but what's quite nice and is updated on this Jadoon Trooper is as you can see on the mesh, um, as you can see on the visor, um, it's been painted silver, which I think is really effective because it really does show sort of highlight the detail of the mesh of the actual visor itself. We have a nice silver band going all along the neck section. We have a nice Jadoon abs there because obviously this Jadoon works out. Um, so that has a really nice sort of attention to detail, a nice sort of sculpting. We have the great sort of sections of the armor paneling detail there which is done really well. We obviously have the nice buckles and fastened where the armor clips on which is done really well. So taking a look under the arms again we've got the great buckle detail there with all the fastening of where the armor all clips on together. We continue the paneling effect there on the back. Again we have the section detailing on the shoulder pads and obviously the elbow pads there and obviously again the section detail there and again all the different padding on the actual gloves themselves. Now the skirt piece is rather interesting because we've got a slight retool because obviously the Jadoon normally have sort of a translator and a communicator thing there on the belt attached but obviously this Jadoon Trooper doesn't feature that um, so character options have slightly retooled the actual belt piece there um, so you know but it's not obvious that the Jadoon figure is missing um, those accessories which I think slightly inaccurate because the Jadoon themselves in the, ep in the episode do actually feature the you know the standard Jadoon equipment so it's rather um, interesting that they didn't include you know the Jadoon um, equipment really um, which is a little bit a little bit odd really but I guess because we've got the new blaster weapon it doesn't really um, bother me too much so the skirt piece again we have the nice stippling detail of the actual belt there with all the buckles and again we have a nice leather skirt again the boots are done really well with, with the lace detail there and obviously the buckles and obviously the tread of the boots sculpted there so taking a look at the only accessory within this set and it is of course the Jadoon blaster weapon um, obviously character options could have just re-released the standard Jadoon gun and be done with it but they've gone to the extra mile and given us the updated Jadoon blaster weapon which is done really well I absolutely love it and this is a really great addition obviously we've got the great detail obviously it's all molded in a red plastic and then we have all the different detailing sculpted there so on the gun itself we have the uh, sculpting detail of the panelled section there with a nice sort of silver trim going around uh, again we've got a nice sort of silver section we've got the um, inner mechanisms of the gun um, which is sculpted there which is done brilliantly really good attention to detail again we've got the panelled effect there on the gun on the barrel of the gun you can see all the little indentations which is really again fantastic attention to detail by character options so this is done really well with the nice sort of red on silver really makes it pop so the gun itself just slots into the Jadoon Trooper's hand rather well and as you can see he does look rather cool so moving on to the comparison so if I bring in the original series 3 Jadoon Trooper release um, as you can see the figure is basically um, the standard Jadoon figure what we've all known and loved over the years but obviously with the slight difference of the mesh being painted on the actual helmet which I think is a lot more effective because it really does highlight the actual detailing of the mesh on the actual helmet. So if I bring in the Jadoon Captain from the 13th Doctor line of figures from the start of the year, here we have the Jadoon Captain, um, I think that it is really cool to have an updated Jadoon Trooper um, with the updated uh, Jadoon Captain which is really cool. Um, I think that the only downside I have with this figure personally is the lack of no sort of Jadoon equipment on the belt. Um, I think that that would have been really cool to have obviously because character options have gone you know the extra mile of giving us the updated um, equipment on the Jadoon belt so it seems a bit of a shame 
not to actually include it on the Jadoon figure itself actually. So here we have a quick little display of Fugitive of the Jadoon and it's great to have a updated Jadoon Trooper and of course the 13th Doctor has her fam which is really good to have Ryan and the ass to complete the 13th Doctor's TARDIS team. So what are my concluding thoughts on Doctor Who, a friends and foe of the 13th Doctor collector set? Well, I think that this set is a must, as it completes the 13th Doctor's TARDIS team by having the addition of Ryan and Yaz, and I think that this set also offers something for army builders, in the sense of the Jadoon Trooper. Um, so I feel like this set does have a lot to offer. I think that the figures themselves are brilliant. Um, I only have a few minor issues with them. I think Yaz is a superb figure. I think that the likeness to Mandip Gill is superb. It just looks absolutely incredible. It is a really good likeness to Mandip Gill and it is a welcome addition to the Doctor Who figure collection. Ryan, again, the likeness is superb to Tosin Cole and again, I think that character options have done really well making these figures as it is a really clever use of using the primeval figs themselves. The Jadoon Trooper, I think, again, is a great addition. The gun, uh, blaster, really good to have an updated um, Jadoon weapon. Um, but I do find it a little bit odd that the Jadoon itself didn't come with sort of the traditional sort of Jadoon um, equipment on the belt. But I can see why character options didn't include it. Um, but it just, it would have been nice to have actually included that. But I guess having the updated gun makes up for the lack of um, no equipment on the belt itself. So I really do recommend this figure set. I feel like this is one of the highlights of the Doc 2 b &M sets for 2020. You know, because it features two of the current companions in the TARDIS. I think the Jadoon Trooper um, is a good addition um, because obviously it's great to have the Jadoon because obviously they could have put Graham in the set. Um, but by having the Jadoon, I think that it definitely makes the set um, stand out even more. So I definitely do recommend the friends and foe of the 13th Doctor. I feel like this is a really good set and character options have done a superb job with giving us Yaz and Ryan in figure form and it is a good and it's always good to have a Jadoon figure. So thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next review, whatever that will be. And as soon as the other B&M figure sets are released, I will be reviewing the unit set, the second Doctor TARDIS. Um, obviously, I'll be reviewing the companions of the fourth Doctor and the two Dalek sets as well. Um, so they'll be upcoming in the near future once they are released. So once again, thank you very much for Cat Corruption for sending this to review. Um, it is greatly appreciated. Um, so thank you very much for watching this review and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much and goodbye.